Hey, welcome back. Today I want to talk about flow along surface. I use it all the time. I know a lot of people love using it because you can take objects from a flat surface and put them on really any kind of other surface, no matter what the shape is. It's really useful, but I find a lot of people are doing it incorrectly. There's a small tweak that you can do and a concept that if you understand, you'll never go wrong with flow along surface. All right, so I'm gonna open a file here. You can follow along as well if you use that link below and download the exercise file. Uh, let's begin. So in this file, you see I have like a base surface and a target surface, and I'm trying to get this little pyramid from here to here. And most people know how to do this. You can use flow along surface. You click the object you want to move, hit enter, select a corner on the base surface, select a corner on the target surface, and you're through, right? But let's imagine for a moment that this was rotated this way, All right? Now let's try the same command again, trying to get this map from here to here. So again, flow along surface, select the object, enter here and here, and you can see didn't really work in this case. It kind of went on the other side, uh, not sure why. Let's try again on just some other corners and see what happens. Okay, this time it's facing the right way, and when I repeat it, this time it's facing the other way, and was it supposed to skew? Did I want it in the right orientation? Uh, you know, things can go wrong, especially when they, if you have text and it ends up going sideways and you want it to go one direction but it went another, it can get really, really frustrating, right? So what is really going on? There's two things I want you to keep in mind, okay? Number one is very, very simple. All you do is when you do a flow along surface, just take this auto adjust off. By default, it's on. Everyone keeps it on. This is gonna have Rhino guess the corner and guess the right corner that you're trying to send it to and the orientation. You don't want Rhino doing that. You want to understand how to do it yourself, okay? So auto adjust, make sure that is no. All right, now, even if I continue with that operation with auto adjust as no, let's just make sure it's no, select base, select this, it still did the same thing, right? So just that setting itself is not enough. Turning auto adjust off means that now you have control over how these objects get placed. Let me show you how to do that. So first, let me just move this object over here. And let me just type show, S-H-O-W. I had some things hidden over here. Let's bring those up. And now you'll see that I have these little U and V symbols on these surfaces. What are these little U and V symbols? Okay, let's go ahead and have a look. If you're not familiar with them, if you click on a surface and type D-I-R, which is direction, you'll see the axes, the U and V directions on your surface, right? These are the local axes on your surface. And you can see over here, the red direction goes this way from left to right, that's my U direction. The green one goes like from the bottom of my screen near the top of my screen, that's the V direction. Okay, so when the U and V go down, all right, together, so they're lower numbers, that's kind of like your origin on the surface. That's where the surface kind of begins and increases in the U one way and the V the other way. Okay, but what's important about that is you understand that the base and the target surface will follow the same U and V with respect to the object you're trying to place. Okay, so first try to match those, make sure your U's and V's are matched between the surfaces. And secondly, think about where the up direction is on your surface. Now look over here, you'll see that there's an orange direction and you'll say, hey, that makes sense, that should be my local Z, so to speak, because if you look at your X, Y, Z, you see X, Y, and Z goes up. So if you think of this as your surface X and Y, then your little Z is going up. But look, if I click, it'll actually flip direction. So unlike the world axes where the Z will always be up this way, for whatever reason, in a surface, you can flip the direction of a surface, okay? Now, what you wanna keep in mind is that when it comes to the up direction, it's not determined by the surface. Okay, when it comes to the up direction and flow along surface, just for that operation, ignore where the up is according to the orange arrow. Okay, always follow the right hand rule to figure out where is the up in your base surface and your target surface. What is the right hand rule? Okay, so the right hand rule says that if you hold your palm out, your right hand out, and you imagine you're curling clockwise, or sorry, counterclockwise from U to V, then where your thumb points is the up direction on your surface. Okay, so I have this little diagram over here. You can see if you're going from U to V, okay, your thumb will be in the normal direction going up. All right, something like this, like U and V, and then 
your thumb should be the up direction. That determines the up. So when you look, when you type DIR and you're looking at the surface, ignore where the up is because you can just click and change that. Look at where the U and V is. And I know I keep repeating myself, but if you understand that, you will not go wrong. Let's look at where the U and V is on this surface, DIR. And you can see that the U and V follow that little diagram I have. So as long as the U and the V are lined up, no matter where you click on your base surface, no matter where you click on your target surface, it will always land correctly. For example, let me go ahead and delete these uh, pyramids here. Uh -huh. Delete this one, delete that one. And now let's try flow along surface, right? So flow along surface, select objects to flow, this one, enter. Now notice it says auto adjust no, and notice that it just says select base surface. It no longer says select a corner because it doesn't matter where you click. I can click on the opposite corner here and the opposite corner here, and it will always land in the same spot because it will land relative to its U and V location from one surface to another following the up direction that the U and V give you. It doesn't matter what the up direction of this base surface is or the target surface. Let's try again. Okay, I'll show you one more time over here. Direction, you can see here is the U in the red, V in the green, and let's look over here. Yep, U and V in this direction. Now, if you did want to actively change that, you could reverse the U, reverse the V, or even flip the U and V directions depending on what you're trying to do. Okay, but in this case, I think I'm okay. But notice what happens. Again, flow along surface, select base surface. I'm just going to click the middle. And again, I'm just going to click the middle on the target. And look where it landed it. It landed it here, which makes sense, right? Think about it. U and V, if you use the right hand rule, the up is in the direction of the pyramid apex going up like this. And if you took this U and V, its up direction is actually going back here. Okay. And that's why the pyramid up goes there. Now that you understand that, you can actually do a whole bunch of other things. So for example, over here, I want to add some text onto this surface. Okay, this is supposed to be some kind of ring. And there's a surface here. Let's place some text on the inner side of this surface. That's a little trickier to do. How do you know what the base surface should be? You know what the target is in this case, what should the base be? Here's where I put a little bit of you know, estimated reality into play. For example, if I took this surface and I kind of unrolled it into a large strip, what would that strip look like? Okay, let's go ahead and figure that out. So if I type in length, okay, and I look at the length of this line, it's uh, 12 inches. Obviously, this must be a big sculpture or something, right? 12 inches wide is this big ring. Okay, so that's 12. And what's the length of this edge here on the circle? 335, so 12 and 335. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangle, 335 and 12. And this, if I use boundary surface, turns it into a surface. I can delete the curve now. There. And now this surface is basically an approximation of this unrolled. Okay. And let's now create some text. So use this text component. Uh, I'm going to keep it as solids. Uh, group the output, maybe, maybe not. It's okay. Let's just leave it as sample text. Click OK. Oh, it's a pretty good, uh, you know, size. I think that works. Sample text. Now, when this goes over onto this side, I actually want it embedded a little bit so I can boolean it out of whatever shape this ring is going to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually I will group it. Select last group and move it down a little bit. So I'm kind of digging into that surface. Maybe it doesn't have to be that deep, but whatever. We just want to light light carving out. Okay. Now this I can again, just fine tune it in my top view if I want to just make sure it's centered or so. Now how do I know where this is going to land on here? Again, check your U and V direction. So if I select this one, right and type direction, notice that because I'd use the Rhino rectangle tool, it actually kept my uh, origin, so to speak over here, and you see the U is going to the right and V is going up. So again, you want to make sure that that U and V line up in your target surface. So type DIR. Okay. And now you see the U. Yeah, that looks right. I want the U to go this way. So it goes S A M P L E and so on. And look at that V that's going up here. That's correct because it should go up the letter. So S should go somewhere like here, A M P and so on. If, there was anything wrong with that. Like for example, if it was this direction, it would not work. 
Make sure that the U's and V's are lining up in the way you want them to. Second thing is placement. Okay, where is it going to be placed? If I put this all the way to one end, where will it end up on this surface? If you put it all the way towards an edge, let's just try and see, right? So if I say flow along surface, this whole group, select the base surface, select the target surface. Look, it matched the U, it matched the V, and it places it in the relative location. So here the U and V is really low. So the S goes where the U and V is really low. If you want it to be perfect down here, okay, where would you have to put it? Well, you can do one thing. You can, um, you know, create a line in the middle, okay? Uh, you could copy this over. And now, you know, I'm just doing this very quickly, which is just finding a mid midpoint line over here. And then if I used a bounding box, then I could use this and the bounding box and then to find the middle of that bounding box, move that perfectly in the middle here. And what that does is I can delete all this now or put on a different layer. But for the little YouTube tutorial, I'm just going to be pretty quick. And now this is perfectly centered on the left half of this strip. So let's see what happens when I do the flow along surface with this. So again, flow along surface, all this on this base surface to this target surface, and you see that sample text falls perfectly down here. That's great, right? Because now if I take this shape, let's say I take this shape here, uh, join it, revolve, set revolve axis. I have a little axis here, start angle zero to 360. Take this and that, and then just Boolean split out of here. Oh. Oh, I have to select all of them. Okay, Boolean split all of these out, and it should create this, like that. Look at that, perfect, right? That's exactly how you'd want to do that. So, again, just remember those few things, right? Flow along surface. Make sure that that option is checked off, which is right here. Um, oh my God, I didn't do that right at all. Boom, this one. Auto adjust is set to no that you know how to use directions and you know placement is relative. So uh, understanding that you should be good to go on flow along surface. Go ahead and download this. You can also download all my other Rhino and Grasshopper files and my free training, 20 tips to model twice as fast in Rhino and Grasshopper. Hope this helps. If it did, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.